Thank you, Speaker. Just two quick uh, SQs for Minister. I think the first is I note that there will be a future energy fund which will be set up um, by the year end. So just wanted to ask um, if there is any specific amounts that will actually be earmarked for these two uh, new technologies for the infrastructure and grid upgrades that will be necessary should we decide to go ahead with um, implementing this in a larger scale. Second is in terms of, uh, I note Minister's response that it is still, the government is still monitoring SMR technology. At the same time, I also saw a recent piece of news that the EMA CEO shared that um, SMR technology is actually a possible solution to power Singapore's data centres. So on that note, I just wanted to ask if there's a certain timeline uh, on this. And uh, given that the last time we did a feasibility study of about 10 years ago, are there any plans to then conduct a proper study to see whether it is possible to power not just the data centre industry, but that of um, our energy requirements? Thank you. For the Future Energy Fund, uh, I've shared earlier on, uh, I believe it was at the Budget COS this year, that in some of the infrastructural investments, particularly pertaining to interconnectors, uh, that is what we envisage part of the Future Energy Fund will be used for. Um, it would be um, premature at this particular point in time to sort of uh, talk about what amounts have been earmarked, but with time, we will come back and lay out what are the, uh, the amounts that we have actually been setting aside to, to, to develop and um, to sort of uh, invest in, to seed and to catalyze some of the development. So the first point is perhaps for the members' own uh, uh, understanding, the first focus will be on the interconnectors and this is relating to the renewable energy imports. For the small modular reactors today, while there's been a lot of discussions, there's been also a lot of uh, publicity around the potential for SMRs, we have been looking globally. The number of sites where one SMR has been deployed in a commercially and economically feasible, uh, feasible segment has yet to be demonstrated. However, that being said, it still holds quite a fair bit of promise because the safety buffer zones are significantly less than during the time when we did the first feasibility study. I think that was around back in 2012 where the safety buffer zones for the conventional large-sized nuclear reactors did not make it possible for us or feasible for us to, to be considering investing in such type of technology within our island state. However, today, given the nascency of some of these projects, we have not decided whether we will move on to another feasibility study. We are waiting for data to come out. We have uh, just entered into an agreement, the, the 123 agreement with the US. Our main focus is on understanding the safety, the reliability, and the technical aspects of smaller modular reactor type of technology. I think in the context of thinking forward, what are some possible pathways we can use? Because we do have, we, we have committed to a net zero target by 2050. So what are some of the alternative pathways you can do for us to continue to fulfill our zero emission target at the same time accommodate high growth industries, whether it is in uh, semiconductors or even uh, wafer fabs or even data centers. We will explore all possible pathways in order for us to, to enable our policy space to be able to accommodate some of these setups. So SMRs is one. I've also shared in this house that we are also looking at geothermal exploration. We have, uh, as I've earlier on shared, that we are considering using ammonia, green ammonia as a pathfinder. We are also looking at the uh, possibility of carbon capture and storage. We are also 
working with like-minded countries for implementation agreements according to Article 6 of the Paris Accord on carbon credits as well. So it is one of multiple pathways that EMA, the Energy Division of MTI, have embarked on to explore every possible means we can to decarbonize. And within the, our confines of policy space in terms of affordability and sustainability. Thank you.